In life, we all strive to find something worth fighting for. For a chosen few, that purpose is found in country, a pride in pursuit of something far greater than self, sacrifice, discipline, the erosion of wants and material needs. We celebrate those brave enough as the stars of the only show in town, Army versus Navy, deserving of its own day. For these men, 365 days worth of preparation for this 60 minutes of football. This is not a game, this is a purpose. At West Point, the phrase beat Navy isn't just a rally cry, it's a greeting by which you address your superiors. In Annapolis, beat Army printed on every weight and every pad, etched into the stones beneath your feet, a constant reminder of the task at hand. Make no mistake about it, there is a respect between these two rooted in reason, but today's mission is to dismantle the other, a time-honored tradition in sport that's provided indelible moments. In 26, a battle of unbeatens separated by nothing. In 45, Army's national title. In 63, the emotions just days removed from a national tragedy. Then in 83, they went west, and from 02 to 15, 14 years of unbroken Navy dominance. We heard for a long time about the streak. It feels good to be a part of the team. They put that to an end. Soon, the next chapter, in a rivalry that highlights the best of us. This game, a time capsule of the sport's truest form. Today, bitter rivals with the sole mission of bettering the other. Tomorrow, teammates on a battlefield far more important. From this field, to every corner of the earth. It's Army versus Navy. Next. Yes, sir, Joe Musso. Thank you for that open. Uh, that'll get your blood pumping. That'll get you excited about America's game. Army Navy live from MetLife Stadium. You can watch it on CBS. You can stream it for free on CBSSports.com. Three o'clock kickoff. Um, Tom Fernelli, Chip Patterson, as we sit here and take a look at the game itself. Uh, CBS Sports HQ will be your home for a lot of the important coverage during and around this game. Uh, so be sure to keep it at CBS Sports HQ. You'll have uh, Joe Musso, Danny Cannell, uh, plenty more from the CBS crew. But... Tom, we got to look at the jerseys that we've got here because every single season, uh, Army and Navy seem to be bringing the heat in terms of bringing in uh, a new wrinkle. Uh, they always like to tie it uh, to a certain uh, you know, division. They always like to have a little bit of a historical callback uh, with their uniforms for this game. So Army's unis, Navy's unis. We're going total uni watch here. Please don't sue me, uni watch. Uh, what do you like better in terms of the edge on the threads? You know, I, I like them both, and I think you're right. Both of these teams have done a really good job and have been very creative with their uniforms in recent years. But for this year, I like Navy's better than Army's. I, I, I like what Army was trying to do with the camouflage. I just think that it was a better concept than it has proven to be in practice. It looks a little drab, whereas Navy's, like, everything just pops. The blue, the red, the white, and those helmets are just sweet. I think that's what kind of really puts it over the top for me. I, I like Navy's uniforms, Chip. I know you're going to disagree, but that's fine. You're able to be wrong. If you're right. We can we can say power ranking them, right? Like I, I just have my army is one and my navy is two. Navy reminds me a little bit more of an NBA All-Star game, but for Army, it looks like the thing that I love the most about option football, which is the land grab. It was something we talked about on the Cover 3 <laughs> podcast, that when we have these two teams and they're both running the option offense, it's all about success rate. It's all about gaining just a little bit more than what you had before and pushing the other defense back. I mean, it is militaristic. It goes right in line with the armed forces. Option football makes me think about old time battles so sign me up for the camo at least on that one yeah no so it's, let's take it's, a look they're, they're both sweet no yeah, I was gonna say, no, they're don't... both sweet i would wear either one of them yeah without a doubt okay so what about the game itself because uh we've got two teams that are in very different places i mean sure you know rivalries throw out the record books yada 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 but army is trying to win this game 
for the fourth time in five years. Uh, Army is the better team so far based on performance this season, having gone eight and three. And also just in terms of uh, the way that it's competed, even against some of the better teams on its schedule, you will remember Army scored 56 points against Wake Forest earlier this year. They did give up 70. That's true. Navy, on the other hand, uh, has played well at times. You know, it hung right there with Cincinnati. It's got a better than 500 record against the spread. But this has been a midshipman group that fell way short uh, early in the year offensively, had to shuffle the staff a little bit. But you know, they still remain competitive. So as you look at this game and as you're trying to come up with some picks for it, uh, what's your what's your best bet in this game? Well, you know what my best bet is. My best bet has been written in stone for the last however many years at this point. I'm taking the under. This is a game between service academies and going all the way back to 2005, which is as far as my records go, and I'm sure it goes back into 1896 when this series first began. But the under in games between service academies since 2005 is 49 and 1. That means you're cashing at nearly an 80% clip just betting the under. And I think since Ken Yamatololo took over at Navy, it's been 13 straight years in which this game has stayed under the total. So you look at this one and you say 35 points. That's terrifying. That's not a lot of points. Don't worry. They don't score many points. Last year's game was 15 to nothing. Earlier this year when Army and Air Force played, it was 21 to 14. The way that the games are designed, you talked about the land grab with these offenses. They go four yards at a time, five yards at a time. Touchdown drives last 15 plays and take seven and a half minutes off the clock because the clock never stops. Therefore, it's hard for either team to put a lot of points on the board unless they all just completely forget how to tackle. And granted, the way Navy's run defense has played this season, that's not out of the realm of possibilities. But I also like Navy against the spread because if the game's going to be low scoring and Navy is getting a touchdown, Logic says I should probably take that touchdown. And as you mentioned, while Navy got off to a very slow start to the season and its record is only three and eight, if you look at how they have played in recent weeks against tougher teams in their conference, in the games they lose, they're not getting blown out. They keep you close. They might not be able to beat you. And I think we're going to see that in this case, too, where Army, I think, is going to win. I think it is the better team, but I just don't think they're going to be able to pull away from the Navy. So give me Navy in the points and the under. Ooh, you sound so smart, Tom Fernelli, because we are men of principles. And men of principles take the under in Service Academy games, especially when it is an Army-Navy game. And we are always at least going to be intrigued by taking the underdog in a rivalry game, especially if you are going to get one whole touchdown in a game that, yes, we are also projecting will be very low scoring. You make great points about the way that Navy played against the toughest opponents in the American. You could also argue that the strength of schedule, while being the American might have hurt Cincinnati and Houston at times this season, that it is a little bit tougher than what Army puts together for its own strength of schedule, though the Black Knights did a great job of putting Power 5 opponents on its schedule, as they always do. So I'm looking at the way this game is going to play out, and I'm thinking, of course you're going to take the under, because these two teams rank number one and number two in terms of the least amount of pass attempts per game. We're talking seven or eight passes thrown in the entire game like 15 combined, there is just not going to be a lot of time where you see the clock stop. And so, like you, I'm going to take the under. And also, because of the way that Kidney Matalolo is probably going to want to make sure that if this is uh, a season that is going to be somewhat of a lost season, you might as well steal one from Army here at the end. Now, a reminder of the stakes here, if Army wins the game, then they win the Commander-in-Chief trophy outright. If Navy wins the game, Army still retains the Commander-in-Chief trophy, but officially it is a stalemate uh, between Army, Navy, and Air Force. And Tom Fernelli and I are going to be who you want to watch this game with. We are going to be live at youtube.com slash cover three. Uh, we're going to have guests joining us and we are going to be talking about uh, the game, getting into some of the experiences that former players have had. So youtube.com slash cover three. It is the Army Navy watch party. It is the cover three family and you should come and hang out with us. We're going to get started around 245. A reminder, kickoff is at 3 p.m. Eastern time. We love the tradition of this game. We also 
like trying to make a little money. We're going to look at this from a betting perspective. By the way, you can catch the Army Navy game on CBS 3 Eastern there on Saturday. Let's welcome welcome in betting expert John Berger. Uh, just kind of give me your expectations for this because, look, it's going to be warmer than normal. It might be rainy here. We got the whole deal with do you take the over? How do you approach this game from a betting perspective? Amanda, you're, you're dead to West Point grad, grad, correct? Yes, he went to West. Yeah, so, well, this is a big weekend for you guys. So let's talk, talk about, you've been around this, around this game. Let's talk about expectations. I think first of all, um, if this is, if you're a true college football fan, put it on your bucket, bucket list. Um, um, there's a whole of venues and a handful of games around the ground tree that happen every year. Uh, if you haven't, haven't seen one of these, I think, I think you ought to. I think you have to get up and, and go see this thing. And, and, and I think you're going to see a, a very similar type game, game from what we come to expect. I think this is going to be a tight, tight. Um, this is going to be a game that's going to come out of the wire. And because both teams, Amanda, run basically the same offense, there's some different formations and some motions and some other things. But it's basically the same offense. And because of that, the game, the game is very short. The clock, clock never stops. The clock continues to run. I think in this particular situation, I just think Army Army is better at what they do uh, than Navy is in terms of, of the triple option. This is a football team that's consistently in, in that set six and third and two. And when you look when you look at numbers and you add all this up, uh, and you realize kind of kind of the right nature of this and didn't dis that back, I just think that Army deep into the game, game in the third or fourth quarter can come up. With those was one, one plays that's that's going to be the difference. And I'll reference the fact that when you look at their, their schedule, uh, this, uh, this is a team that ran successfully against Wake Forest. This is a team that ran successfully against Wisconsin. But here's here's the thing: nobody's really really counting this game. Keep in mind when Army. And that is John Berger there, uh, obviously having a little trouble with his audio. But look, this game is so interesting from a betting perspective. Uh, make sure to download and follow the Cover 3 podcast. Of course, you can watch at 3 Eastern on CBS. Tom Fornelli was asked, how low would that total have to be for you to take the over? Final answer, two and a half. <laughs> obviously, he's joking there. But look, the under is hit in the past 15 matches between these two. Make sure to check it out on Saturday. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.